Today, we're going to show you how to do a thermal buck install with the WRB behind a continuous installation. Now, our instructions follow a document put out by AMA, FMA, and the WDMA. That's 500 16. It's installing a flanged window when using foam plastic insulation. They call for the use of a rose, and that's what this product is it's a rough opening and extension support element. It supports the window, it stops the thermal bridging, it aids in flashing, speeds up the install, and gives you a flush plane then so you can install your cladding. We'll start out at the seal, cutting flush across the seal. Then when we come off the jam, we're going to cut an inch and a half into the wall exposing the OSB. Then we'll stop four inches before we get to the head and then we'll cut across the head four inches. We'll continue coming up. We'll cut 45 degree angles, roughly three inches at all four corners then. Tape back the flaps and get ready for the next step. One of the most important things when using thermal buck is to make sure that your rough opening allows for the use of thermal buck. We have a, a leg that goes inside the rough opening that's a half inch thick, so you have to allow for that when making your rough opening. With this window we're using today, the window manufacturer requires a rough opening of 24 inches wide by 30 inches tall. So overall, our new rough opening is 25 inches by 31 inches. That way we give the window manufacturer everything he needs that way the window has room to move and we have room to install thermal block. We want to check the rough opening to make sure it's sized correctly and to make sure that it's square and plumb. If it's not square and plumb, this is the time that we want to change the rough opening. If your seal application's out, you drive a shim in behind, underneath the seal and raise up whatever side needs to raise up. Same with the jams, you move those however they need to be moved. You also want to check to make sure your seal is not sloped to the back. Thermal buck does have a slope in it, a positive slope to the outside. That way if your windows do leak, we drain out to the outside, we'll cover that later. But we don't want to start out against that. We want to make sure that we're level or positively sloped to the outside. We're going to show you how to cut thermal buck. It's a little bit different. It's very simple to cut once you realize how to cut it and how to set your saw. The first thing you want to do before you cut your thermal buck though, is to look it over. Make sure that there hasn't been any shipping damage or anything where there's any holes punctured through the skin, any really, really large dents that might keep you from sealing up and keeping the water and air out before you use the product. Next would be setting the saw itself. I don't turn this to 45 degrees. I turn the saw itself to 45 degrees so I can see the tongue well. The start out cut, we always cut with the tongue back towards the fence with the major opening up. That way, once we do our next cut, we can see our marks. Okay. Next, we'll turn it around. We'll leave our saw set exactly where it is. We will not change our saw. So, our first, our first cut will be down at the end where the waist is at so we can mark our bed so we know how to line up our cuts. We don't need to take much off and we're going to leave the piece set very still after we cut it. So we've got our piece still so what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll make a mark on the bed where the good usable piece is at. That way we can set up our marks. Every piece that we cut, we want to cut a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch short of the opening. 
That way there's room for the sealant and we don't make the corners bind. If we have corners that bind, it'll make the pieces bow and then they won't set right in. So we'll take our first measurement. We'll subtract that off. Now after we make that cut, I always mark the ends. The first piece I cut was the bottom, or a seal, so I put a B or an S on it. The next piece, we'll turn it right back around, put your tongue back with the opening up. Then, we'll take our next size. Again, take a sixteenth to an eighth of, eighth of an inch off. Line it right up with the mark on your bed. Make your cut. So that would be the left side. So I'll put a L on that. Turn it back around. Now we're going to cut the head piece. The next step is to dry fit it. This is an important step because we want to make sure that our gaps are right. So we've already put three pieces in. We'll install the top piece. And as you can see, there's nothing tight where it's bowed. We've got movement in all the pieces. Uh, the gaps look good. So the next step would be to put the sealant in. Now we're going to put the sealant on the pieces of thermal buck themselves. There will be three beads. You'll have one bead towards the outside edge where the nail goes in to hold the thermal buck into place. You'll have one in the center for an extra added air and water seal. And then one towards the outside edge where the screws actually penetrate through. This is a Dow Corning 758. It's the sealant that we use. Once it's cured, it still stays very pliable and it's, it's a good long-term sealant. We do not want to use a cheap sealant at this base because we're counting on this to be our air and water seal. Again, we'll flash it later. There will be additional steps. We'll have two to three layers of flashing on everything we do, but this is a very integral part of our air and water seal. Now that we've got the sealant on all the pieces of thermal buck, we're going to start the installation. What we do, the reason we cut the sealed piece flush is we're going to put a bead of sealant between the OSB and the WRB. We're going to press that into place and then we'll put the thermal buck over top of that. This is the only place where we want the WRB coming between the wall and thermal buck. No other place do we want that. Uh, in case what moisture would happen to get behind your WRB, then there's an easy pass for it to wick in. Here it's a shingle defect, everything goes to the outside, so this is the only reason that we want the WRB between the thermal buck and the wall, and that's the seal application. We've got our three beads behind the thermal buck. Now we'll put it into place in the seal application. We start with the seal and make sure that you put a lot of force in that, getting that tight. 
you're not going to hurt the thermal buck. It's a very, very rigid product. So make sure you get a really, really firm, tight area up against the wall. Next, we'll take the corners as we discussed earlier. Again, the reason we miter these corners is we've got a big area to seal up moisture in there. So we'll put our Dow Corning 758 sealant in the top and bottom corner. I guess in the right and left corner. So now we're going to move into placing the jams. We've got our sealant in the corners. We want to have good ooze out. So we'll put the, put the piece in. Again, make sure you're very firm with pushing the product in. Now bring it down so you have room to put your head piece in. Make sure you get a nice tight corner. We'll move into the next. We're doing our other jam next. Make sure your corners are nice and tight. Again, make sure you're pushing very firmly in on the wall. You're not going to hurt the thermal buck by pushing. We'll seal your top corners. Now we'll put the top piece in. Again, we've got our three beads like we do on others. We'll push one corner in, then we'll bring the other corner up, and we'll pull down in the center of this. That way we can bow the piece and get it in. That piece being so short, I couldn't get a lot of bend, and I pushed some of the ceiling back. So before we put this all together, we want to make sure we added some sealant here because we do want to have a really good seal. So I'll make sure I hold this apart and I'm going to push a little bit of sealant into that opening. Now the back side's really good, we don't need to worry about that, but we definitely do want to make sure that we're using plenty of sealant. Now we're lining up the corners, we've got good ooze out, so we're ready to start the nail. Okay, next we're going to nail the thermal buck into place. So what you need to do is you need to have at least an inch and a quarter penetration into the lumber itself. So you need to take the thickness of the thermal buck, which is a half inch, and add an inch and a quarter. So you need an inch and a three quarter nail. You can use a nail gun. You can hand nail whatever you prefer to do. We use galvanized nails. Aluminum can tend to bend when you're driving them in. Okay. When we're doing this, make sure you're pushing back in, lots of force. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to clamp the corners. The reason for clamping the corners is to hold everything tight till the sealant sets. What we do is we drive a two inch, inch and three quarter, whatever you want to do, whatever you have, roofing nails into the corners mm -hmm. so they cross across the section like you're seeing right here. That way it holds the two pieces and keeps them from moving till the sealant sets. WRB into the thermal buck on the jams. The head we will not do till we install the windows. But we're going to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to put a bead of the sealant where thermal buck meets the wall to make sure we can keep any water, if it would get behind the WRB, from getting into that 
Then we're going to bring the WRB over, press it into place, then we're going to take the WRB to the thermal block. That way we have that additional layered effect. WRB sealed to the thermal box. As you see, we've got some slit, small slits down in our corner. We'll start off by taping those. Start at the bottom just like we always do with taping. There will be no tape underneath because everything's shingled and everything's good. Then we'll bring a piece of tape up, wrap around the top and the bottom. Using the tape that's used for the house wrap itself, the seam tape. So we're using Tyvek house wrap today. And so we're just going to use the Tyvek seam tape at these joints. Start off by <clears throat> sealing that. We're going to come about two inches down around the bottom, make sure we get a good wrap around. And then we're going to keep this. Seal that cut again. Now we've got a good weather resistant barrier except for the headpiece right now. We're going to let the headpiece go till tomorrow when we come back to install the windows after letting the sealant set for 24 hours. We're getting ready to install the window. The first step is we're going to put the sealant on to have a good seal between the window and the thermal block. We're going to leave the seal open. We're not going to put any sealant in there because the thermal block itself has a slope to it to go to the outside. Anytime the window would leak, all windows eventually are going to leak. Whether it's condensation, whether uh, there's movement over time, they're going to leak. And this is one of the things that I really like about thermal block too. I want to point this out. When you typically make a pan flashing, you only come up six inches. And what happens to the rest of this? What happens if your window leaks where your sashes come together? What happens if it leaks up towards the top? All of that moisture is still going into the raw wood. It's going into your house. It's going into areas where it's going to cause issues. Here, we're watertight the whole way around. We seal the back. That way, any moisture that comes in, no matter where it comes in the window, it's not going into wood anywhere. It's going to come straight down to the bottom and come straight up. So we'll start out with putting the sealant on. We overlap the bottom by about an inch to two inches. Then we go the whole way around the side and the top perimeter. Now, if you'd like, you can put the sealant on the bottom back side of the planche overlapping the nail holes, uh, but I prefer to do it this way, that way I don't get the sealant on my fingers. Set the window into place. One of the nice things is you've got a seam in your windows, and you've got a seam in your thermal buck. So you can pretty much line up the window in the center by lining up these seams. We put one screw to hold the window in place till we check for level and plumb. 
the screw that we use, we need to penetrate the stud at least an inch and a quarter. So what we're using is two inch thermal buck and then we got a half inch sheeting. So we've got two and a half inches before we even get to the stud. So we've got to add another uh, inch and a quarter onto that. So we're looking at three and three quarters inch minimum screw or nail. You can nail this too if you prefer. I like to use screws. Make sure you follow the window manufacturer's instructions at this point. Okay? We're looking tom and level. We'll put the nails or the screws in at an angle. That way we make sure that we go in and we get plenty of the stud. Now as you see we're tightening these up and we're getting them very firm. We're denting the thermal buck just slightly so we know we're good and snug. We don't want to do it too tight because then that can affect the way the window operates. We just want to make things good and snug. So we just finished installing the window. Next we're going to get into the flashing. We're going to use a flashing tape that works with the WRB. It's the DuPont tape because it's going to be touching their uh, Tyvek wrap. So we'll start off by doing the jams. We're going to wrap up over the top so we've got a good layered effect. Then we're going to put some sealant where the thermal buck meets the wall. We're going to bring the WRB down into it, press it into it, then lay it over top of the flange. Then we'll put one piece across the head. Then we'll tape any of the cut joints so everything's a good shingled layered effect. into place. Now we're going to put the ceiling across the top. That ceiling is just another added protection layer to keep any moisture that might possibly get behind the WRB from going in behind the thermal box and then it makes a good transition corner for when you put your insulation in later. So we'll bring that down, make sure we tape that in good. And then you see how the flap comes down and overlaps the flange on the window. That way any moisture that gets back here comes down the WRB, comes down and it can't get behind. Now we've got the head flashing done. We're gonna do one last layer over the small cuts in the corners. We'll roll that into place. Now you've got a weather tight assembly. That way, next, you would come and you would put your insulation up tight against it and now you've got a flush plane for your cladding to go in. Thermal buck comes in different thicknesses to match what you're doing on the outside of your structure. Whether you're using different thicknesses of rigid insulation or rigid insulation and rain screen. That way you have a flush plane to tie your cladding into your structure.